it's not the most exciting match because there wasn't that much action and I kind of I usually don't game plan guys that much I just try to go out there and shoot a ton and uh, be really active and then see what happens but with Kuhn he's just he's real heavy and uh, his, his leg defense has gotten better so I got to be a little more strategic with what I do but and take down in overtime is cool uh, so yeah how hard is that for you when you're geared to shoot 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 to dial it back um well, I mean, it's just making adjustments. So I'll never, I'll probably never have to wrestle anyone like Kuhn. After NCAA's in two weeks, I probably won't have to wrestle anyone like him again in my career. You know, so, but we just, me and Tervella talk about it. It's just trying to figure out the challenge, what you have to do to execute against them. And uh, against him, it's a little different than everybody else, like I already said, but. Still, it's a challenge that you got to try and figure out. Is, Next time, I'll do it better. Is that fun for you to have a challenge like that? That's something different outside the, the first box. time. The first time I wrestled him, it uh, I wasn't. It was the first time in a long time where I haven't really been that excited to wrestle an opponent, as I knew how big he was, and uh, I was like, "Man, this is gonna stink." But then, of course, when you lose, it's like now it's a real competition. So, round two went to me, and then I'm predicting round three uh, will be in Cleveland in two weeks and we'll see what happens there. You said hey, maybe it was boring. I, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time so even though there's not scoring it's freaking very exciting. Um, <laughs> can you, and it seemed like I think you took it on the first attack maybe late in the second you kind of got to his leg then you got to his leg and missed it and then each time was just a little bit closer to scoring. Did you feel that? Yeah I felt it and I, I think next time uh, what I should need to do is score earlier so that he has to come after me. And then once he comes after me, I can probably start uh, picking the, picking his ankles a little bit better. But he's pretty got athletic feet for being as big as he is. Um, and he does a good job with hand fighting and all that. So, yeah. It seemed like part of the strategy was get off one good shot. Um, don't get caught underneath man, because of his girth and, and get off one good shot. And also, don't get into any chest-to-chest -chest situation. Yeah. Again, just because of his size. Um, is that is that is that part of the strategy necessarily precisely because of how big he is? Yeah, I mean, the couple things in the hand fighting that were, were stuff that we worked on and then just finishing really quickly and making sure that you had the leg secure. Uh, because he's heavy, like you said, and um, his leg defense has gotten better. So, what do you do to try to replicate that stuff in the practice room? There aren't too many Adam Coons walking around. Yeah, I mean, we had Taha Aku yep. in town for a little bit, but he doesn't even wrestle like Coon. He wrestles a little bit different than 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 Coon does. Uh, really, you don't really. I mean, you can't really replicate it. Just have to go think of different things and then try and execute them when I'm out there. Um, do you remember, the, like, do, or can you recall, recall the different sequences that happened right now? Specifically, yeah. like, got to his ankle, I was coming out, and he, like, jumped over and almost got behind you? Yeah, I like, remember. are you, oh, crap, I got it, I got it, oh, crap, he's almost got me? Or, like, are there even thoughts going? I don't remember thinking anything, just reaction, you know? Uh, I got to his leg, and I didn't pull it tight enough to my chest, so... And I tried to pop up too early without having it secure. And then he straightened my arm out, came over top. Then I knew I had to face him. And then the second time, I got it really secure. And I tried to come out underneath him. It got loose again, so I came back down, got it secure again, came back up. And then he bailed and went towards the out-of-bounds. And I was able to pick, it up, pick his leg up, and it was light because I was on his ankle. Usually I'm on his thigh, which is heavy, but it was, I was on his ankle, so it was light. And then just was able to trip and grab his other leg. Kyle, last one for me. Tom has raved about the job that Travell has done on the staff, almost bringing a philosophic approach to things. He's raved about you know, the job he's done with you. What, why is Travell so special to the staff? And why is he so Oh, for so many reasons. And uh, it's like the Travell impact. He's philosophically and mentally, he. Uh, he is an athlete's coach, and uh, he hasn't forgot what it was like to be an athlete and the stress and anxiety that sometimes comes with that. So it's not like 
it's not like uh, just go out there and do it. You know, what's the big deal? Just go. I mean, I, I'll go. I can go out there and do it. But he he understands that it's not that easy, and he's so easy to talk to about those type of things because. Uh, he seems to break things down. Right, breaks like, things. Wow. He, he rarely says the wrong thing. And he goes out of his way to make sure that uh, he knows what you like and what you don't like. And I, I feel like a lot of coaches don't do that. I mean, he'll ask you, like, what do you, what do you like being said to you before you wrestle? What, how long after a match do you want before I can talk to you? What do you want me to do after you lose? What do you want me to do after I win? So when you have that type of communication with a coach, uh, and I don't think a lot of people do that, it makes it the relationship really good, really trusting, and then uh, you're able to grow with each other because of it. Because you're never really getting on each other's nerves, you're just trying to figure things out together. You've won the biggest tournaments on the planet. What kind of thrill do you get from winning a Big Ten title and having to conquer an opponent like that? The main thrill I get is uh, the team. The team is my favorite part. And I love, comp I love the competition and uh, to be honest, I don't really like wrestling heavyweight that much. <laughs> I'd rather wrestle, obviously, I'd rather wrestle 213, where that's like my literal perfect weight class, you know? Cut a little bit of weight, and then I'm one of the bigger, definitely the strongest guy at that weight class in the whole world, so I like that. But it's a different challenge, um, and the team aspect is so fun. I love, I feel like at Ohio State, we're real unique in the way that we do things, the way that we talk, the way that we dress, the way that we compete. Uh, how much we care for each other, so it's all it's all really cool. And I mean, I'm, I plan on wrestling for a really long time, so I plan on being in tons of more, a couple more, a lot of more world championships, a couple more Olympic games, all these different. You're Egan. I want to compete in so many different tournaments. So uh, the highs of winning a title. Um, that's not that won't be my favorite part of it. It's going to be the process of getting ready to compete, hang out, hang out with my friends, and learning more about wrestling, and becoming a better wrestler, and then trying to go out there and execute. You guys wrestled lights out to win this tournament last year, and then Penn State did the same at the NCAA championships. What kind of void did that leave with your team, with the way it ended last year, or or, or did it not leave one with with the way you guys competed at the NCAAs? Well, I think. The main thing was, I mean, we beat them at the Big Tens. They beat us. They wrestled really, really well at the Nationals and beat us at the Nationals. And then it was uh, all summer, Penn State's unbeatable, right? So and we were like, we're going to be better than we were last year. We thought we thought we were going to get McKenna. Uh, we knew how good Pletcher was going to be at 33, Nate back down to 25. Uh, we were like, we were just, we thought we were the best team, you know? And then... We weren't able to prove it in the duel, but we were able to prove it here. And then I feel very confident in our ability to do it again at NCAA's. I feel more felt more I feel more confident about NCAA's than I do the Big Tens. Last thing, uh, you know, you get that takedown in overtime, but it's challenged. So you have this like probably yes yeah. kind of feeling. Then like, how do you do? You have to be like, boom! I got to calm myself because what, I have to go back and wrestle. Yeah, I was. I was, uh, I mean, I had no idea if I got the takedown or not. So Coach Terbell and Coach Ryan thought I did. Jaggers thought I did, but they all thought it was close. So, I mean, I would have been ready to wrestle, uh, I would, uh, whatever, 30 seconds it was. But I was happy that the two points were up on the board. Match was over. That was nice. Last one for me, too, Kyle. Your roommate, you guys are the bookends, right? From yeah. 25, anyway. Um, there's probably not anybody who's tougher on himself and who takes more seriously than Nathan was after a loss. He was really, um, how proud are you of, of, of your roommate for the last few years and in the job that he did this weekend? Nate's, a beat. Nate's amazing. Uh, I mean, and people think this is 100% Nate, right? But it's not even... His knee is still messed up, and he's just out there competing because he's tough as nails. And he would never tell you that it's messed up, right? But uh, it's it's still healing, and he's still competing and putting it on the line. And he's got a Spencer Lee is really tough. Suriano's really tough. Cruz is really tough. So his weight is loaded, um, but he's just so tough and so good that he can compete with those guys anyways. Congratulations, best of luck in Cleveland. Thanks.